moça.
great blessing. What a great blessing. I honor these great men of God over here. Uh, thank you all for accepting to come and uh, uh, just do a service and uh, do it uh, with all, all your heart. Amen. And I believe, uh, you know, there's something that I, I, I told folks a couple of years ago. I said, whatever you pour your life to, it ends up pouring back to you. Uh, whatever you invest your time doing, it ends up investing its time back on you. Amen. So it's, uh, it's a great blessing. I want to see you all share, 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 share. Uh, share the page for I believe God is going to do mighty, mighty wonderful things in our life. Share on WhatsApp group. Share all over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our Fireplace Church members, uh, we honor God for you and thank you for hooking up. Would you do me a favor and share the page all over? Go crazy with the page. I uh, just want to see, see you all go crazy with the page. Go crazy with the page. Uh, share it as many times as you can. For I believe uh, this is our season. And I tell you, you know, every time after, every time after the service, I go back and I rewatch these services and I see them bad boys. I mean, just, just salvage the word like crazy. Amen. I, I remember I, there's a period of time that I was, I was hungry and hungry for real. So I went down, you know, and I saw that big M. And I took a curve, you know. And when I got over there, they asked me what you want. I said, everything I ordered extra. And uh, it was like I was mad with it. And I held my bugger right on my face, face to face with the bugger. And I gave it a real good bite. And I believe tonight, we're going to take a real good bite into the word of God. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Charles and... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Pastor Isaac, I honor God for you and thank you for investing your time uh, to come and uh, uh, teach the word of God uh, in our lives. I know these great men of God have been a mega blessing, mega, mega blessing, amen, in our lives. Would you give me uh, that uh, background uh, um, uh, music? Uh, let's get someone on the piano so that they can give us uh, that background worship, amen. Uh, there is a scripture that I want us to, to take a look at. Uh, I've seen it over here. I know I've, I know I've seen this scripture. I put it over here. Uh, let me get this scripture. Before we get started, let me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for tonight, uh, for you speak in our hearts through your servants. Lord, let your word come into life. Uh, we have invested our life into your things, and there is no way you're not going to pour back in our lives. If a man goes to work every day and he exchanges his time for the money, then a human being that is so wicked can pay them back. I know on this platform, as we share the word of God, as we feed the word of God, I know new grace is going to be released on our life. No favor going to be released on our life. And our life will change in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us go into the Bible, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 15. Uh, there's something I wanted us to take a look at. Uh, would you get the, the microphones uh, set up? Uh, John 15, 15. Let me get it in the King James Version. King James Version. Uh, the scripture here. Uh, the scripture says, uh, verse 15, John chapter 15, verse 15, it says, You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants. For the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Uh, what I wanted us to uh, take a look at Pastor Charles and uh, Pastor Isaac. 
I, I know these great men of God don't need an introduction. Their giftings has already done them good justice. They have spoken so well to the whole world that almost, uh, if you don't know them, then you don't exist. You understand? If you don't know Pastor Isaac and you don't know Pastor Charles, know well that you do not exist. But them men of God have done so well. Uh, their giftings and their callings has done them uh, a great introduction on the national and international platform. So I don't have to introduce them. But I want us to take a look at uh, Pastor Charles and Pastor Isaac. At this scripture, Jesus Christ uh, tells the disciples that I have called you my friends. I don't call you servants anymore. You are my friends. And I know Christians, we have invested a lot of time uh, to build relationship with our God. There's no doubt. Everybody out here, whatever we do, we build a relationship with God. But I want us to switch that relationship and take a look at uh, our relationship based on members. Uh, my relationship with you, your relationship with everybody else, uh, you know, people at the church, and you know, uh, uh, you, you. Many times I've seen a lot of stuff going on in churches because of failed relationship. Uh, people switch churches, church to church, because they cannot maintain relationship with other members. What is the problem, and what is going on wrong that we are doing? Praise God. Um, first of all, I, I just want to thank God for the, um, the great opportunity that we've had during the, the, the lockdown to be able to just have this table talk and, and, and share the word of God. There's been a tremendous growth on many people's front. I've had people that have, you know, I've said, Pastor, I'm now addicted to that. I want to listen to you. You guys talk and, te and teach. I've learned a lot. We've had feedback from uh, across the globe. So we want to thank God for those that have been glued and stuck to watching every other time. We also want to thank God for Pastor Godfrey Awari for allowing us the opportunity uh, to be able to come to your houses uh, through the Fireplace Ministries. Praise God. Uh, we've shared from a lot, a, a, a range of topics over the weeks and um, <clears throat> it's been a bit encouraging and, and, we want to, and we want to bless God for it. Praise the living God. Amen. Now, the topic that comes out today is really about, um, about about relationships, and we are going to you know digest it from every point of view how God has spoken. And but I truly believe that um, the the word the, the Christian experience is best first of all on a relationship. And I think um, when God created very many things in the in the garden, He created animals, he created elephants and lions. There's one thing that, that the Lord discovered immediately. He discovered that much as man has got every other domestic animal around him, man is not complete without another man. So he said it's not good for a man to be alone. And that relationship there that God speaks about in the scripture is not necessarily, you know, sexual. It was a accompany, it was accompaniment, it was uh, helpment, it was a relationship. It is uh, the two coming together, praise God. And um, so I, I believe that many people don't know, don't understand the power of relationships in church. Uh, this, we've read a verse, John 15, 15. Uh, it says, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. That even God wants to relate to us with that level of being friends. He wants, he doesn't want to, to just, that's why sometimes I have had men of God who say, they don't want to pray anymore, God use me. They want to pray God work through me. Because when God is using you, you may me a servant, it's like, it's going to use you and dump you. But when he works through you, he makes you better. Praise God. So, relationship is really very key. But, the, but the, the, one of the issues I've found out in church over the years is that people do not really necessarily enjoy good relationships. Because there are people in church who are unlovable. And so, how do you love the ones that are unlovable? So, that has been one of the key things. In, in John 13, there's a scripture, Pastor Isaac, that I want to show you. Can help me read John 13. You, you can read, okay? Thank you. Can you please give some life to this microphone a little bit in the monitors? Hello, can. hello, John 13. Uh, John 13 and verses uh, 34. John 13 34 says, 
a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love if you have love for one another. So, exactly. What what the Lord is saying to us is that there were 10 commandments in the Old Testament which had very many principles that followed to it. There were 10 but with so many principles, cutting the goats and giving the doves and being almost 2000 things that you must do to keep relating with God. But when the Lord comes and is answering us and answer here in John 13, he says, this one commandment I give you. He summarized all the ten in one. Love one another. And by this, the world will know you're my disciples. So in other words, the true manifestation to the world that we are disciples of Christ is not the anointing, is not the demons we chase. It is the love we experience between us. Yeah. Yeah. It's your turn. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you're watching us from, Pastor Isaac is my name. <sighs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> when you look at Genesis in chapter 2, chapter 2, chapter 3, uh, when God created man, the sole purpose of, crea- of creating man was relationship. God's intended purpose was to have somebody that he can relate with on the earthly realms. That's why he created Adam. He said, let's create man in our own image. He wanted to create a a God-like person on earth. And that's why the Bible says he used to come on uh, in the cool of the day to relate with man. Have a discussion. Have that friendship. But when, when sin took over man, Sin alienated man from God. But because of love, according to what Pastor introduced, love, that love propelled God to abandon the throne, to come back because he still pants for relationship. God, yes, angels worship God. Angels love God. All creation bow before God. But he is more interested in the relationship of man. David says, who is man that you're so mindful of? That you've made him a little lower than angels. But you see, we are a little lower than angels. But his love, even angels ask, who is man? Who is this man that you're so mindful? God is not so mindful of angels. God is not so mindful of plants. God is so mindful of man. That even when you sin because of love, you know, because of of his love, he has made his loving kindness to be new every morning. Have you known in this kingdom we're in, there is a provision that every morning he makes available grace. Grace, New grace. He makes sure that every day there is a new mercy. His mercies are new every morning. You know why? Because he wants man. If you sinned yesterday, if you tap into the grace of today, your sins of yesterday are washed away. That's relationship. Now, when we come to the relationship from man to man, there is no way you're going to relate with God if you can relate with man. Because God is revealed through man. Because even God is is waiting for the manifestation of man. Can you hear me? Yes. You cannot relate with God. You can't love God and you don't love your neighbor. Exactly. You will be a hypocrite to say I worship God and I trivialize man. Through man the expressions of God are made manifest. Through man. Angels live with us but we don't see them. Men are angels. God has made sure that he has bestowed himself in man. That if you ignore man, you've ignored God. Mm. If you want to see God, first see man. If you want to love God, love man. If you want to worship God, worship God who is in a man. I did not say I did not say worship a man. Worship a God. Worship God who is in a man. You know, we are living in a generation whereby hypocrisy is on a peak. 
Somebody bows before God and cries before God and he hates a neighbor. Somebody says he loves God and does everything to God but he cannot do anything to man. That day I will, stay, I will tell you, I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was hungry, you did not feed me. And they will ask, when did we never saw you? And he said, I was that man. There is a secret with everybody you meet on earth. It's not a coincidence that you met me. It's not. There is a divine purpose as to why you met me. And until you realize why I came into your life, you will never fulfill your divine purpose in me. In fact, I've realized our sole purpose in life is to love man. Love is in dimensions. We have agape. That's love. Man. We, but we, we, we have different love is in dimension. That's why the Bible says greater love has no man. He tried to show that their loves, the love is in dimension. That, now this is greater. Let, let's first abandon the greater love. Let's come back to the love of man to man. Pastor Charles, I don't know why of all people I met him. I met him in Kampala, not here. I've known the grace upon his life and I fall in love with whatever he does. Do you know that God has orchestrated events? God has made everything available in man. Yeah, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. And I realize, sir, in heaven there is nothing. Come on, somebody. Let me, let me say this very good, profoundly. In heaven, there is nothing. When he created everything, he said, all things are beautiful. Meaning, I see everything beautiful. Saying that everything is beautiful, beautiful is tied with sight. That means he saw that everything is on earth. But you know what he does? Every blessing of the Lord is from God through man to man. They did not get now, it. Now, now, men of God, I have a question. Somebody else, I'm asking for someone who is watching. Yes. Because now, uh, you see churches yeah. uh, that people come to church from all walks of life. Yeah. People have their backgrounds and history. So, uh, the problem that I see in the church today is that we have made church Hollywood. Uh, we act like everything is okay. And people have too. Because if they get to know about the mess on your back, my brother, you gotta go hide. So building a relationship with someone that you cannot open up your heart to it's hard. Yeah. And, and also, as Pastor Isaac was, uh, was sharing, there is a scripture, I think it's in Luke 10. The, the, the rich young ruler came and uh, is a, actually, it's a rich young lawyer. I mean, that was <laughs> an interesting description of, the, of this guy. He came to Jesus and he asked him, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Yes. And, then, and then the Lord said to him, sell everything you have and, and then follow me. And the guy couldn't. Then after that, he began to share uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. He said a man was coming from Jericho into Jerusalem and he fell amid his thieves. When he fell among his thieves, he says the priest passed him. The Levite passed him. That, that, that is a choir member. <laughs> and they were all rushing to the service. And they had a genuine reason. The man has fallen among the thieves. They even must have judged him. Why is he moving at night? <laughs> why doesn't why why don't they walk uh, you know with other people around them? So, lots of times, we think what we call ministry is on the pulpit, but yet God we realize that the true ministry is that love you've shown to one person with nobody watching. And a good Samaritan comes up and he, he has got oil, he's got bandages, he binds the man, takes him to hospital, pays bills, even tells the, the owner of the hospital, if this man stays for more than I paid for, count the check on me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the rich young ruler said to him, so what must I do? He said, um, go and do the same. And then he made a statement to him, he said, there are only two laws. There are only two laws. It says, law number one, love, love God. Yes. Law with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Right. Law number two, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the Lord now introduces three dimensions of love. It says, it is 
the number one love must be for, for God and the love for God must be complete love it must be soul it must be heart it must be mind it must be spirit everything in you must love God so you must train your heart to love God when you love God you must also love self because it is hard to love a neighbor if you don't love yourself you mentioned about background and stuff lots of people don't love because of where they've come from they have been hurt in the in their past they've gone through bitterness they have had issues in yesterday so it is hard to love and they have a proper excuse because they've been hurt before they you know everything in them is standing in a suspicious form you know like if something has ever happened to you if maybe if you've ever been raped by somebody every time you see any man with a trouser you take long to trust them yeah. so a lot of people have got experiences that give them how they relate but the problem is we if you're going to love other people you must first of all get the love of god when you get the agape the love of god the love that is unconditional yeah. then you can begin to love there's the other thing that is about love most of the purest kind of love is love that has no expectation one day i shared with you and, and i told you that's why most of the marriage love is fake because it has it must have certain they, kind they of come in with a hidden agenda yes it has mm. even if it's not hidden it's sometimes it's even clear it's yes. very very it's portrayed there it's on the table mm. i do i do some people don't even know what what they have done when they have signed for it yes you know and then they realize that what they did is not what they thought they had done mm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one that's a good one after, you know after some point, I know. <laughs> after years hallelujah that's a shouting line right you over know, there they just missed it yes you know and then a second and, then somebody will, <laughs> and then somebody will go through years still figuring out what exactly did i do you know but they talked about in sickness and in health and people make vows i do I, I lead weddings and then you ask people those authentic questions will you love this girl will you honor her will you in sickness in and in health and then the person just answers the answer is automated i do but without really thinking about the words you just committed yourself to yes. you've made a commitment to an unconditional kind of love you see, what people don't understand about relationships, why God needs them. Every place you're going to enter in life is connected directly to a relationship. Come on. Wow. Come on. Yes, sir. Everything you're going to become is connected to a relationship. Mm. And the way you relate this word relationship is in two words in English. In Uganda, it, it, it may never make sense. But in English, it makes sense. Mm. Relation and ship. ship. Mm. That word ship, as I s s h i p yes is a cargo carrier mm. is a ship on water mm. yeah. so relationship simply means the way you relate with the ship that has come your way has got the power to carry you mm. wow so people most times get a, a, a blessing something comes your way to carry you and you misuse it and so years, years pass and you live in regret. And you're like, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done this. Mm. And then we have got people in church who use a phrase, I don't, I don't love anybody in this place. Man, I love God. Mm. And the Lord says, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen? Mm. Yes. And yet you hate your neighbor whom you see every day. Mm. So for me, I think the challenge is called a love challenge. Can you love me even if I'm unlovable? Mm. Mm. Do you have enough love in your tank to be able to love people that are not really lovable? Because that is the, the true power of the gospel. Mm. I don't want to, to, to speak the whole night. Pastor Isaac. <laughs> uh, pa Pastor, you say says, you says something that is very important. Now the question, you know what I wanted to, to, to understand. You see people come with broken hearts. Yeah. Hearts are in pieces. And because they are along the way, they are, they are, they are damaged themselves. Yeah. Or somebody else has damaged them. They come and they meet you at a place with the expectation of building something, putting their hearts together. And then when you don't do it, and they say, that's how the, everybody is. 
Uh, everybody that walks in my life, they walk away like that. So how do you deal with it, that kind of... Um, before Pastor Isaac comes in, yes, one of the biggest challenges I've, I've, I've been... Uh, as sometimes when I share with, with people, uh, with church groups in our ministry, I tell them, we spend so much time in our life looking for Mr. Right and Mrs. Right. Or somebody right. Mm. But have you ever thought about being right yourself? Mm. You understand? Mm. Have you ever sat down there and said to yourself, I want Mrs. Right, but am I right for Mrs.? Mm. Am I right for Mr. So and so? Mm. So that, that, lead, that place where you, you can be able to say to yourself, that I want to be right for somebody. I think for me, it is a place of soul searching. It's where you go like, you know what? Because many times we hate people because we are pointing fingers. Yes. It is easy to see everybody's fault except your own. Mm. Nobody came to church tonight. <laughs> everybody, everybody is quiet. I know. We are alone here tonight. Yes, sir. But we're going to be okay. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes the call is lonely. But God That's is going to help us That's true. along the way. <laughs> okay, yeah. When you stand for the truth, you stand alone, I'm told. Yes. Praise God. But, but the truth is, I know Pastor Isaac has got a lot in his spirit. The truth is, people must be able to be right in every relationship. Before you choose out, because there is no perfect person you're going to find. Yeah. Whether it is a church, there is no perfect church. Whether well, it is a choir, mm. you're going to have issues. And if people in church don't, don't know how to manage conflict and live together, because what is forgiveness? How can you say you've forgiven me and then you can't even say hello to me? Some people are in church today and when they say, cast out this devil, to them the imagination is not a devil, it is a human being. Mm. They close their eyes and they are seeing the human person. They are seeing you right there. And they are yes. saying in the name of Jesus. I rebuke him. That is my delay. That is my confusion. <laughs> that is my trouble. Yes. sir. <laughs> but how can you even minister to someone you don't love? Yes. sir. Or how can you even receive from someone you, you don't love? Yes. sir. I'm telling you there is drama in church. Sometimes you sit down there and, and you are going to preach. And someone has an issue on you. Mm. And then they just, they just do their mouth. Mm. Mm. There's nothing you say that makes sense to them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, sir. I like that. That's a, that's that's so profound. You know, we pastors we are facing a lot of challenge. You know why? You come to preach over here, and uh, there's some folks looking at you in a, in, a, in some way. This guy is the demon himself. Why yeah. why is he holding this microphone? Let me tell you. Let me say this. Before you, you point fingers onto somebody, just, just know you have your own problems also. Every one of us has dirty linen that he, he, don't want, he, he wouldn't want to disclose. Every one of us is running away from something. Every one of us. All of us, we are running away from something. Pastor, to be sincere, there is something you cannot tell anybody. Let's, 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 be, let's, let's, stop, let's, let's stop practicing uh, 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 holy here, religious. Yes, we are spirit-filled. But we are running away from something. Everybody has a past. Some of us have ran away and we have been successful. Every saint has, every saint has a past. Yes. And every sinner has a future. Yes. Mm. Some, but some people are still living in their past. Yeah. That's why it's very easy to, de to destroy somebody yes. because they were destroyed before. Because they live in their past. Yeah. It has to come a time whereby you have to drop your past. Now, when it, when it goes to, to looking for a soul man, before you look for a soul man, look for your soul. The first thing you should do before you look for a soul man, look for your soul. Because if you find your soul, you will find your soul mate. Soul mate means somebody with your same soul with you. Did you get what I said? Or you, you home? Soul man means somebody bears the same soul with you. So if you don't know your soul, you cannot. Get, you never get a soul mate because you, you don't know what you're looking for. You said something profound, Pastor. I, actually, when I build my church someday, I'm gonna edit marriage vows. 
Yeah, are you, you know, I'm with somebody who is going to marry. You can get started here with the fireplace church. And we, have to, we have to come to the point of editing them, man of God. In good and bad, let's be honest. Yeah, you said oh, in good and in bad. So we should come to a point whereby we should edit. But then, but then that way you have not loved. Now, because, just, because. <laughs> that's, that's, me, that's, Be- that's a joke. That's a joke. That, that's a joke. My because brother. love. Saints. Is having the whole package. Now listen, when God gives you somebody, he has given you that somebody with all baggage. Mm. You must be willing. In fact, the greatest love is not this love. Oh my God, you kiss, you love. No. The real love is that love when you see that negative side of somebody and you love it better than the positive side. They didn't get it. When God so loved the world, the world had sinned. When we look at world, he's not so talking about plants. He's speaking about mankind. Mm. Man had sinned. Yeah. But even in sin, he still loved us. Let me tell you, when Jesus, when, when Paul was speaking about love in, in Ephesians, he said, husband, love your wife as Christ. Love the church, yeah. He knew the kind of love you would want to give. But he said now, Drop your love and love your wife as Christ. Because even when we sin, he stretches his hand and says in your sin, I'll pull you. Somebody just said here to you online that, are you, are you about to edit the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> One of the preachers, some preachers are editing the Bible, but that was a joke. <laughs> Members, if you love somebody, you should love them fully and wholehearted. Yeah. Now going back to love, finding a soul meant, your soul is important. Before you give love, give love to yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. Mm. Come on, somebody. You cannot give what you don't have. If you lack love, you cannot give love. That's why you find somebody easy to destroy because destruction is within them. If you love somebody, forgiveness is imminent. Man of God, we are in church and drama is in church. We are speaking, we are talking to church folks. In fact, sometimes you, all you have to do is to get popcorn and sit down. In fact, if, <laughs> if you do not, one of these days you do not have to go to the movies and theater. Don't, and don't pay for cinema. Exactly. You yeah. just have to grab your popcorns and your sword and come to church. <laughs> you say something profound. Come see people pray. You, will, that's, you know why uh, prayers are not being answered? People are so carnal that if you say chest demons, you look at the neighbor and say, in the name of God, Isaac, demon. Now demons are in men flesh. And you see the other thing that you mentioned about finding your soul. There is a notion we I, I grew up hearing that I am going to find my my better half or my my <laughs> other half. How can you be a half human being? <laughs> you see that is now the challenge that and, many and people. And then you look for another half. And then look for the other half. <laughs> so you spend all your years trying to find completion mm. by somebody else. Exactly. So you are incomplete. But the Bible doesn't say, and one half will meet the other half, and the two halves will become one. Mm. Bible says, and the two shall, shall become, become one. one. One must be complete to join the other one. That is heavenly mathematics. Mm. Yes. It's one plus one, and it gives you one. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a math of heaven. <laughs> one yeah. plus one is gives you one. one. Yes. It, it is, it, they, they must be complete. That's why a young lady going into marriage because is looking for something missing, mm. missing coin, mm. mi- something m- they stole my thing. Uh, so and Mr. John must fulfill it. Mm. You you you'll be disappointed. I've come to understand um, a little bit with experience and seeing people in counseling that the best way to love is to have the least expectation. Mm. Exactly. The moment you cut your expectation, you're going to love everybody. But the moment you hype your expectation, you're going to be hurt. Yeah. Mm. Because everybody that comes into your life, the moment they access your life, they have the capacity now to hurt you. Yeah. Somebody who you find on the street is not as good or better than the one you're, you're with right now. Mm. It's because you have not yet experienced the other one. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I just preached to you. So, so what you want to say, they should try somebody else? Yeah. No. <laughs> what I'm saying... No, that when you, when you see what you got, what I'm challenge saying, it. What I'm saying is that don't 
dismiss this one because you think it is terrible yes. by looking at the one you've never experienced. Yes. yes. It is just having an, an idea which is false. You know, we live in an, an, a, a future which we don't even know. Mm. You know, sometimes one day, I can't tell you a story. Oh. <laughs> but, Break it down. <laughs> I would have told you back. <laughs> Break it down. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so, so one day, mm. uh, me and my wife had, uh, had, uh, had some issues. And so, I, uh, so I, I, I leave home and I'm not really happy with that. You know, you, you know those moments where you're very, very uh, angry and you feel like you can even kill a human being and, and bury them at the house. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and then sit and take a cup of tea. And don't tell, yes, mm. and, then, and then don't tell anybody. Of course, yeah. all that goes through your mind. You process it until, until you call Jesus and your mind wakes up. Now, so, but I go to the lunch hour to preach. And uh, after, after preaching, I sat down. And this guy, I think he was new in church. He'd, ne he'd never been to church. He was, I, I knew now that he was a lawyer after that. But he was, you know, lawyers in Kampala are always very smart. So he was dressed, putting on his tie. So he stood there. And it was a, a rare face. And I was a bit concerned. So I told the people that were in line that I know every day that, you know, see me and we, and we, and we share. I felt late. I told them, can you wait for me? Let me speak with this gentleman. He didn't even know church things. He actually called me Reverend Father. So I think he had just, he had just come to church. So he said to me, Father, Father, pray for me. He looked at me, he said, but Father, you look young. Can you handle my problems? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, let me see the Holy Ghost will help me. He said, he said, Father, I married this woman. I said, uh -huh. I married her one year ago. But Father, I can't bear anymore. They told me that you, you, you people here have got power to remove some things. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, maybe bring it on. And the man said to me, Father, can you believe it? My wife wakes up at night, every night at three, and she begins to run out of the house naked. I have put everything. I, I have I've put burglar proof. I've done everything. Father, I won't let it go. Maybe just pray for me one more time. Before the man prayed, the man thought he had come to, for counseling. But while he's telling me his problems, he's canceling me. Because. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Because immediately I looked at him and I realized that much as she annoyed me very much, she's not that bad. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Come on. Like, like I'm really Come angry. On. In fact, once I prayed for the man, the next thing I, I called and I, I said, Hey, hi, darling. How you doing? You all right? Everything okay? I'm here missing you. Yeah. And then I hung up. But the point was, silently I was I was communicating. You're fine. You're okay. You're not that bad. We can, <laughs> we, we can work with what we have right now. Mm -hmm. You see, after seeing a, a guy saying that his wife is a night dancer, I was appreciative of what God is doing oh in my, my life. God. So many times we do not appreciate what we have mm. because we have a mind of some rare thing that is out there, mm. especially men. Uh, I don't want to go there. But relationships, uh, I'll, I'll go there at, at some point. Relationships <laughs> are very key. Much as we are, we are looking ourselves into marriage ones right now. Mm. But natural relationships in church are very key. I think for me is lower your expectation. Mm. Deal with people. Know that they're damaged. They've got issues. It's not going to be easy. Mm. But, but train yourself mm. to love people. Because not, like even as we're on the panel, we are preachers. You cannot minister to people that you hate. Yeah, mm. true. You cannot. Mm. And as a, as a shepherd of, of the flock, you got to train yourself to love. Mm. You know? And that love is so many things, Pastor Isaac. It's so many things. Uh, if you read in Corinthians, it's so many things. Yeah. It's long-suffering. Mm. It is patient. Mm. It is kind. Mm. Uh, it does not keep record of wrong. Mm. That's when many women come out of the bucket. Because mm. she remind you of everything you did on what date, what time. Mm. It was raining, it was winter. What she was wearing. What you're wearing mm. and what you said. Mm. But love doesn't keep record of wrong. Mm. <laughs> so if true love is practiced, people will love to have amnesia over some things. That's true. By the way, if you're a class monitor in life, if you're a headmaster in life, you want to know everything, you want to see what happened, you want to know where they went, you, you're going to die. Mm. Yeah. Come on, say this again. word. This word will <laughs> preach. <it. laughs> this word will kill you because when you, you, you relate with people, I think for me, sometimes what you can do is know your your goal. Mm. 
People love because they want something out of somebody. Yeah. That is why there, is, there are problems everywhere. Someone says they love you, but that's not what they mean. Somebody made a joke in Uganda and he said, every time you go to a girl and tell her you love her, for her, she doesn't hear love. She has just heard the word saying, the World Bank has come to you. <laughs> <laughs> and when a guy, it, it was a joke, that when, when a girl tells a guy, I love you, what the guy does, what the guy hears is not I love you, he hears I want to sleep with you. Mm. So the, the expectations are weird. Are it's, yes. it's, it's, it's there. Uh, there's, there's, there's a mistranslation in these words. Now, now Pastor Charles, <laughs> I know uh, we've dealt a little bit with about uh, relationship uh, as someone who is courting a girl or a, a man. But le let's take a look at uh, relationships in church today uh, outside uh, courting. Uh, there are people that you're supposed to love that they have already made up in their mind they'll never love you. How, how do you love someone who has already made up in, at the back of their mind I'm not going to love you no matter what you do, no matter what you say and, and even if you take them out, you go out with them I have a lot of those ones. Now, now, <laughs> Master, in yes. church we have a lot of those. You come to a place, you come to church, they don't just like you. Mm. And no matter what you do, they will not like you. Mm. Doesn't matter how much you preach, mm. especially as preachers. Mm. Doesn't matter how much you preach or how much smart you are. Mm. You, you, you come smart, it feels like this guy is showing off. Mm. He, he doesn't like anything about you. But what do you do? This is when you have to show maturity. Mm. Loves, loving somebody that doesn't like you and you know of it is a sign of maturity spiritual maturity i love you i know you don't love me i will lay down my life for you and i'll pray for you the greatest if you want to love somebody pray for them you can never hate yeah. hate a person you you, you, you pray for yeah. you can't yeah. every and and, and, and and even before i, I forget if you love and you pray the, one of the best things is to give to that person. Yes. When you give to somebody, Pastor mm, Isaac, mm, mm. you can never hate someone you give. Yeah. Take a hundred dollars. Give it to him. And, 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 and give somebody. Buy them a, a pair of shoes. They are going to struggle with love, with either loving you or hating you. Now, now Pastor, let me know before you go further. Mm. There, there are people, uh, I know we have come from uh, different other parts of the world. Mm. We've come to America. Mm. Uh, and some of our stepmothers don't like us. When, when you tell them you got a man you want to get married, they're already thinking about some voodoo somewhere. Now, uh, you give them anyth anything, you send them money, they take it right there and they start doing kwacha, kwacha, kwacha voodoo. So, how, how can you deal with something like that? How, how you gonna, I, I know it's easy to, be, to say it, yeah. How are you going to love someone who's trying to kill you? Yeah, but, but then if you, for example, if you're a believer and you, and you believe in God, mm. why would you be scared of a witch? Mm. Huh? So, man of God, we should entertain them? Don't, don't entertain them, but you need to forgive them. Yes. You need to, and one of the things you can do that in your spirit is to give to them. I'm telling you something. One day, somebody told me that, and it was, it was the most painful lesson I learned in my life. Somebody told me, you have to forgive them. I said, in words, I said, I've, I've forgiven them. He said, no, no, no. You have not forgiven them until you give to them. That was painful. Mm. Because I took the last money on my mobile money and sent to that person. At, uh, and I told them, I just thought about you. You know, I sent them money. And that was authentic love. And something took off my life. That's why the word is forgive. Mm. If nothing is given from your side, you haven't yet forgiven. <laughs> I like wow. that. That's that's profound. Wow. So that's why if you're gonna if you're gonna break people who don't love you in church and you know that they don't like you for some reason, first of all, the other one key thing, Pastor Isaac, is one of the things I own in my life mm. is my reaction, is my response. Yes. I don't own how you think about me, mm. how she thinks about me, but I own my my reaction and my response. Mm. This, this week I, I I put a statement on Facebook mm. and I told the people that. You own every word you've not said. 
but you become a slave to every word you have said. Mm. Once you say something, you are a slave to it. Mm. But whatever you've not said, yeah. you, you, you own it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so, some, somebody commented over here and he said, Pastor, I said it in Luganda. I say Musumba. No, I think <laughs> I, I, I think loving people is not getting along with people. Yes. But there's a difference. For example, I can love you and make sure that my heart is free with you, mm. but it doesn't mean that we're going to be, you know, parting together is, yes. and being together out there. What, what I'm doing is I'm doing it for myself. Yes. Forgiving you yes. is not for you; it is for me. Yes. Loving you is not for you; it is for mm. me. Yes. So I'm I'm gonna love you because because I I, I got God in my life. Mm. You cannot have God in you and not love people. Mm. You know. So. I think for me, where the, one of the challenges where it is really is that many believers have not gotten to the place where they know that they own their response. People can hate you. People can say everything about you. Are you going to fight every battle? Mm. What if one day, if right now you're, you, you're fighting with the 100 people in the church, what if one day you become big enough and then you are, all of a sudden you are, you are on social media mm. and even someone you don't even know is commenting about you? You're going to stand up there and, 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 and then fight back. No, at the end of the day, you realize that God is training us to be able to understand. How, if people criticize you, if somebody doesn't miss, if somebody misunderstands you, go to them and tell them, you know what, you misunderstood me. Or if you don't understand me, come to me and tell me, mm. Pastor Godfrey, I don't like the way you look at me. Mm. <laughs> the other day. <laughs> The, the, the other day I was walking through there. The way you looked at me, I didn't like. I didn't like the way you looked at my new car. Mm. You have an issue with it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so th th that kind of talk brings pe because people need to know you can easily disconnect from somebody who came to help you. Now that is now that's uh, you 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 said another question right over there uh, because. Uh, that gives me understanding that everybody that connects to you, they have a specific purpose in your life. Yeah. Now, they are temporary people in your life and then they are folks who are going to go with you to your destiny. You understand what I'm saying? So how can you tell the difference so that you do not invest your life building someone that is temporary in your life? I'll say this man of God. Yes. Uh, we can we can never know who is going to be temporary or is going to be permanent but the issues of life and the situations of life will wither them they'll become like chaff you see we have to love them and pour into them as if they are going to stay forever but peradventure if they walk out on you let them go it is one thing for somebody to be in your life and another to stay in your life now they are seasonal people and they are permanent people. If you don't let go of seasonal people, they keep you in that season and you will never see a better season. That's right. Like I normally tell you, I'll say this, I see a lot of disorganization, but it is, it is well with us. Uh, uh, if you don't let go of seasonal people, seasonal people normally walk out on you at their own will. Not you saying go away. If they walk out on you, let them go. Because their season is done. And we have to embrace it. Most of the times, the people walk out on us were more important, so valuable. But let me tell you this. Important people have never, uh, have never, uh, have never, uh, 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 will never cease to come into your life. Let me say this. God is the giver of people to people. He will cause somebody to come into your life for a divine purpose and when that purpose is done let them go yes never hold on to people who have no interest in holding on to you you're gonna you're gonna crush your soul in fact most of you the the drama you're in today is because you've 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 you've, you've not let go of the seasonal people yes. they walked out on you but you still have them in your heart Somebody walked out on you. In fact, if you don't let go of those people, you will fail to enjoy the people that have come. Yes. yes. In marriage, somebody divorced you and you're still clinging on the divorcee. Mm. God has brought you another man, another woman, 
But you're still clinging on that guy. You still remember how you used to do it. No, forget, uh, forget the past. And focus on what God is doing right now. The Bible says, I'm doing a new thing. So, so, won't you see it? You will not see it because you're still in your past. What am I trying to say? Seasonal people come for a reason. Every season comes, comes for a reason. And every reason has a season. And everybody has a season. This is how I move with my life, man of God. I do not think that somebody is going to do good to me. If you do good to me, it's a surprise. That's why in life I don't have expectations of you, of anybody. If you do good to me, to God be the glory. If you don't do good to me, I didn't have expectations. In fact, high expectation, expectations has caused to divorce. Man of God, I've done more than 20 divorces. Not myself. You may say, hey, Pastor, what am I doing? No, not me. You've you done 20 divorces? More. Oh, as a, as a lawyer. As, 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 a, lawyer. as, as a lawyer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and I wanted you to go as, there. As, 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 yes, as, as, I, wanted, as, as, I wanted you to go over there. I was like, I didn't know that secret about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. And I found out when we are in, in, in mediation or something, you find out that this woman, this man had high expectations. He thought of movies. Women are so movie centered. Yeah. They, they think what I saw in Telemundo. It's going to come in real life. A man who will lift you up, take you to bed, bring you this. That's not an, and when it and when it and when it comes to an African way, it's not going to happen, man. You want a man to come, cuddle you, kiss you before you go to work. But where can African men love? Listen, we are grown up. Don't don't. <laughs> No, the man, man of God, don't divert me. I pray okay, that okay, I okay. 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 comment. You can say something right there so that we, we can get it over here. Man of what, God, what is your opinion? Man, just man of God, I need protection until I'm done with my submission. Okay, okay go ahead. Now, we, there, there, there are cultures. Yes, we have to outgrow culture. Mm. But before you outgrow it, you need somebody who will help you in outgrowing it. You understand? And maturity helps you to outgrow a culture. We came to Africa whereby you don't know Africa, you don't open for a lady. A door. But I've realized here in America, a lady will even stand by, uh, will stand aside and, until and wait, you open. Yes. And you have yes. to wait. Mm. And uh, before, when I came, I saw it funny. I used to tell them, Tell about with you, that's how good now. But now I have got to realize that doesn't matter. You have work. to adapt. I have to adapt to a new yes. style. Yes. You, it doesn't matter whether she's my wife or my girlfriend yes. or what. As long as I'm moving with her, with lady, yes. I am you gonna have to open it. for her. That's true. And that's the, the, the that's thing. That's just how it is. That's how it is. Yes. When, when you go to Roman, now you, you have, op now you're opening doors. Now I kind no, of now he's a Roman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man of God, I'm praise God. Why is somebody <laughs> shaking their head? I'm drawing my bed. Sometimes, <laughs> now listen. Sometimes I forget, and they tell them, "Open, let's go." And uh, and I remember, oh, she's a lady. Now listen, we come to a point. Uh, when Paul said, when he went to the Romans, he became like a Roman. He behaved like one. When he go, when you come to America, you have to uh, you have to behave like an American. But the behavior should be for the glorification of God. Yes. Do not adopt. Do not adopt styles of the world. No. If something is not of God, do not adopt it. Mm. Let me go back to expectations. Man of God, never have expectations in anyone. Because people are good, but people can become bad overnight. A spirit came into Judas. He was once good. But overnight, after eating a meal, there was a transfiguration of man. Judas, the good man, became a bad man, willing to sell Jesus. But Judas was one of the disciples that once fought for Jesus. Right now he's selling him off. That's why Jesus had no expectations in him. He even told him, Judas, you betray a son of man with a kiss? But because he knew that man is capable of doing anything. Pastor, I have a question right on that, yes, that you say. Yes, sir. Uh, Jesus Christ, at one point, as he was going with the disciples, uh, Peter made a statement and say, after Jesus say, uh, on this day I'm going to die and uh, they're going to crucify me and stuff. And then Peter said, uh, no, 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 we, I'm not going to let that happen. 
And Jesus called him, Satan, get thee behind me. <laughs> now, the man who let him go on the cross, he called him a friend. Can, can you he was even the one holding the bag of money. <laughs> Somebody here has made a comment on Pastor, on Pastor Isaac. Jesus, I was, that's why I was, I was still laughing. What is that? He said, <laughs> <laughs> that God doesn't care about your problems. He has commanded you to love. So when you say that the man slept with all his problems at night, he does not love his wife. <laughs> <laughs> but again, but, 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 let, me say, let me comment about that. <laughs> let me comment about that. You do not expect somebody who is hurting. Mm. Come on, let's be sincere. You do not expect a hurting man to still love you like normal. For instance, I'm not saying man is a dog. You do not expect a hungry dog to protect you. Oh, to protect you with the weakness it has. We are human beings. It takes maturity to say I am hurting, but I can still offer the love. So what if you spend two years without money? Without, uh, no, uh, don't bring it to money uh, because <laughs> the, <laughs> and the issue was about uh, no, and, and, and the issue here was about problems. No, no, okay. there, there, there are emotional problems and there are physical problems. Okay, I'll, I'll, Do I'll not ask. bring physical problems in a relationship. No, no, but there are emotional problems. You do not expect somebody to function yeah. when they are happy as they would function when they are sad. Yes, that's come, why... Come on, on let's, let's be realistic. I, and, and I agree with you. That's why on most relationships that are going to be very successful, there's got to be a, a compliment, a complementation. Yes. Like, you're able to complete me when I'm missing something. Yes. You're able to support me in one area. Yes. Um, where my emotion is low, you become my strength. Yes. Mm. So that then becomes a balanced relationship. But this person is a woman or what? Do uh, you want to? No, you should. I should know. Mm. That should be a woman. Let me tell you, <laughs> ladies, ladies, God has placed you in the life of every man that you have as a helper. Yeah. You know that my man is now emotionally destroyed, but he cannot offer what I, I need from him. But I can still withstand until he gets better. A lot of women have opened up war on you. There's yes. Another, there's another page called uh, Destiny Matters. Yes. <laughs> and, <there's, laughs> and they're saying, <laughs> the century pastor Isaac, it is your responsibility to love. Okay. okay. And, and another woman has said, Banang, Abami Batuyambo Kweti Kakumi Gugu, and Sawoza Fed, Naye Tufa. No, 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 no. Man of God, let me, let me give a submission today. And let me make it a more, a more interesting but, now. But let would you want me to carry your bag when I don't love you? <laughs> <laughs> now let me make it a little bit interesting now I know what's right when I'm giving a submission I, um, I normally tell you what is right but I normally open up a, 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 a discussion to make sure that I, I, I give you a, a, I give you a provision of thinking yeah, yeah? I know that what's right but I, I can bring a negative uh, submission that I may give you an opportunity to think alright now get this a man somebody has spoken about money the root cause of every evil is love of money. That's why if you want to do anything on earth which is evil, use a woman. Uh, they did not get it. If you want to do any evil, you can use a woman because you know what? They are easily, to, they are easily bought off. I give you my money, go do this. They will do it. Wholeheartedly. Somebody has said, has said not all of them. A few of them. S someone is saying somebody no. Want, this week somebody put something on, on Facebook and he said that most men don't know what to do with a woman who does not need money. Now, man of God, we come to a culture okay. whereby in the United States... <laughs> that's, listen, a, that's a strong statement. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Listen, yeah. listen. Let me... Let me now, okay, now I'm going to give you the right procedure of life. Okay. Now, after, th after you thinking, now I'm going to tell you the right thing. Men, if you do not, if you're not willing to give this woman, please don't go for them. First of all, you must be willing to give them emotional support. Women are weak vessels that anything on earth can destroy them. You must be willing, if you're not willing to stand with them, if you're not willing to give, in fact, a handsome man is the one who can hand something to a woman. I'm coming handsome and you're saying you're handsome handsome means hand something to them Amen. hallelujah Amen. you must if you cannot Halle give hallelujah in fact one of the one of the greatest reflections of love is give Amen. if you cannot give for for god so loved the world that he gave even when i'm hurting i must be willing to give 
I must be willing to stand with this woman. In fact, when I'm hurting is when I have to hold her and, and I let her know even when I'm hurting, I'm there with you. Pastor Isaac. Yes. Uh, Blessed is anybody who is going to be with me. Pastor Isaac. <laughs> Pastor Isaac, in our generation, in our generation, yeah. people give uh, like someone will give you something because they expect something <laughs> from you. <laughs> yes, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. They give you something because they expect something from you. That's a wrong motive. As, as long if you do not meet up their expectation, they look for another alternative. They look for other alternative. And, and some other people, they, they can give you while they're investing in you so that uh, at a certain point, they expect you to bring a return. Man of God, sometimes I, I, <laughs> yes. Uh, sometimes when I share about expectation, yes, I give people the example of our parents. Yes, when your daddy was paying school fees for you, buying shoes, buying diapers, he never looked, looked at you and said, "Hey, I take care of you. Make sure when you grow up, you take care of us." Huh? Are you hearing me? You grow up, take care of us. Good deal. So I pay all the school fees. Your parent pays all year throughout, without any any expectation of you. If you bless them, well and good. If you don't bless them, it, it doesn't matter. All they need is your well-being. They, they're happy for you to become whoever you, you want to become. Now, the, most of the disturbing relationships in marriage and in church is because the people, first of all, have had a weird... And the, one of the problems is the pulpit. We preach to our people certain messages that begin to... to to program their thinking about marriage. To manufacture seeds and it yeah. grows. Receive a man who's driving a Bentley. He's arriving. He's coming. Oh, he's gonna. He must have a wallet. He must have this. So someone goes into a, a world which is unrealistic. Yes. yes begin, right. begin to expect a certain thing that is not real. You know, everybody. Can, so, so the, the man that God brings to this woman, if it's godly man and he doesn't have a wallet and he doesn't have a Bentley, so the woman said, no, no, no. So This is not what so I So the right of people, mm, mm. because they don't fit into the, the picture they have. Yes, sir. And sometimes they can miss out on a good man. For me, I think one of the key things about a husband who comes to you for marriage is th that guy must have a vision because men appreciate in value. Mm. Men by nature can become anything. Mm. They have that chance. Mm. A man can appreciate in value. Mm. Women, however, have a window. You, you hit somebody hard. That's the truth. Yes. Mm. Yeah. We, <laughs> women have a window. Yes. There's, they have a window when their price is too high. Mm. And then at some point it hits the, 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 the roof and then it begins to go down. Mm. Yeah, it's the truth. But so... <laughs> Women must operate in a certain window for their lives. Yes. Mm. Now, a man can be 40 years and can still become something. Mm. Yeah. As long as they have the right ingredient, right seed, right vision, they can become anything. And you see, when you marry material, the problem is here with, with material things. Today, I, you can meet me with a good job. And tomorrow, what if the job goes tomorrow? Mm. Are you still going to love me? So you find many relationships are broken because I married the guy because of the anointing. I married the guy because yeah. he's a pastor, yes. because he stands up before people, because he's famous, because everybody knows him. But when you're in your house alone in your bedroom, fame doesn't matter. There are other things that matter more than being known, being popular. Even money doesn't matter. Yeah. Money, of course, may matter because it brings a good life. Money is good, by the way. Let's not demonize money. Money is good. In fact, the Bible says it's not money that is evil. It's the love of money, of money. Yes. that is the root of all evil. So if you love money too much, <laughs> but there's nothing as terrible. The most parasitic relationship on earth and the most disturbing relationship on earth is to meet somebody who looks at you and every time they look at you, they see something. Either money, either a door, either this. You've, you've seen that joke before on the internet. A certain guy is calling a girl. All night he's calling her and she's, uh, and she's not picking up. So he sends her um, an airtime number that is missing one number. So she receives a message of, of the airtime and she loads the number and the number is not loading. And then, and then she responds to him, honey, one number is missing. <laughs> but she did not pick up any of his calls yes. until he sent airtime. You see? So you, you find that there are people who are just parasitic. 
they want to eat and eat from you and they drain you and you become frustrated so when it, when we, when it comes to marriage things you need to find relationships that build you. it's not all material but somebody must be able to give you some somebody must bring something on the table our girls have been preached to that marry a rich man marry a man who has it all and then you you show up empty-handed <laughs> you, you Why must, are you bringing on the table? You must bring something on the table. You must be able to to complete this guy. Yeah. You know, when God is creating Eve in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, and He said, "I will look for him a suitable help Suitable. In other, somebody must be able to to be to suit my kind of help. Mm. The kind of help pastor you need is not my kind of help. I need. Mm. Yes, sir. So I need somebody who's, who who doesn't come into my life to compete with me. Mm. To intimidate me yeah. or to be intimidated by me by somebody who is comfortable with me mm. to help me on my journey yeah. every wife can be well positioned if they understand if they meet a man with a vision mm. for me i think there are two equations and i close with this one a, a girl if you're going to meet a man you want to marry you because the bible says in ephesians 5 honor your husbands huh? submit yourselves to your husbands mm. You cannot submit to man who you do not honor. Mm. So, the thing begins in the dating process. If you meet a guy and he wants to ask you for marriage and you cannot respect them in their state. Yes. Don't marry them. Because where you're going there, you will need honor to survive in that marriage. Come on. Mm. That's it. So, if don't, and don't marry a guy because you see something futuristic about them. I've seen you. I think you've voted. I think mm. I, th I think you you become mm. better. I think you shall become this. Mm. That weird expectation is always a problem. It, marry a man that if right now that is who they are going to become all their life, you still love them. Mm. 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 I just preached well. Someone mm. should just you know. yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I like sir. that. I like that. And then when when it comes to women women getting uh, into men's lives or a man on the other hand when you look at the woman you want because most of us men have we we the biggest issue about men i'll tell you from the, my main point of view we marry women for other people many people marry a girl who their friends are going to say ha oh, yeah, eh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's hot she's hot mm. she's hot until she burns you you understand? Come say it on, again. Come on, and, <laughs> come on, just say it again, man of God. And and then so so you marry somebody. So somebody needs to hashtag and you, tweet tweet it right now. You marry mm. you, you marry somebody for Facebook. Mm. You marry somebody that you're gonna take pictures with, mm. and they look nice. Mm. You know, and eventually, <laughs> you walk into the house. The barrier, you are you have many likes on Facebook. Yes, but at home you're crying. Mm. And it happens to us pastors. Mm. So you marry color, Auntie, you marry no, hips and chips. But, but, but pastor, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Yeah. Uh, because the problem is church people are not real anymore. They will criticize every time you, when you stand on the pulpit, they're going to criticize what, what you're wearing, yeah. your hair. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, if you bring someone to them, so uh, it brings. <laughs> Man of God, I'll say this. So <laughs> let me say this. When I just come to this uh, to this church, I'll say this with all due respect, Pastor. Uh, there, 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 there are a few people who believed in me. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Everybody pays some good attention. When I came, yesterday somebody sent me a, a, a photo when I just come, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, when I just come to this church, I looked too skinny. Man of God, listen. Too skinny, a little bit darker. That I have a friend, when pastor invites, put me on the poster. That my friend is watching and I, I like that friend of mine. Very good friend. You know what? You know what the pastor said. He can a kasadi kage da vuri da chikan. Before your friends, after your friends. Na mali disa service na chinga mazo. Da kwa ku posta nenga mba. Kaka na kasadi kage da kuge da chikan. Let me tell you. I'm gonna say this. 
you can trivialize somebody who has, who has your breakthrough in life. You can undermine and belittle somebody whose destiny of yours is tied on him. Because this man is not as six packs as you expected. You say, I cannot take this man. He's nothing. You get the six packs guy and he will apply them on you by beating you. In church, we don't have love because too much expectation. I expected a pastor to come wearing like this. Dressed like this. If a pastor comes in a casual, you'll be like, you shut off. This is not a pastor. Because you're used to these men of God who pose. I love being smart because mm. in my profession, we are, we, are, we are trained to be smart. Mm. But it's not that if I'm not smart, I'm not anointed. Listen. Do not love somebody because of how they appear. But again, I will say this. If you know you're going to appear before men, pause to be receivable. Come on, people. I'm going to say this. Everybody pay some attention. If you want people to receive you, dress the way you, are, you, you, would, rec you would receive other people. The way you dress is the way they are going to address you. Let me, let me speak to women. No man needs a caterpillar in their lives. We need a pillar in our lives. If you're not a pillar and you're a caterpillar, I will make sure I break you. Did I make sense? I will make sure I won't go forth with this relationship. If I see the caterpillar being in you, a caterpillar eats everything. Oh, they don't okay. know caterpillars. Okay. They eat, if they, if they land on a tree, they just eat. They, they don't build, but they eat. Yeah. We are called to complement, not to compete. We are sure. called to join hands and build an empire. Mm. Do not trivialize anyone. God is not a respecter of man. He will anoint any he wants. We have in church people, they expect a man of God to be fat. Let me give you a testimony, man of God, as I wind up. Mm. I went to South Africa. My brother, uh, David Musinguzi, he connected me to one man in South Africa. Mm. You know, my brother has this tongue whereby he can sell you something that you wouldn't have, would have, would have bought. He's a good salesperson. You know what he did? He told this man of God, they have a big church, a big, big church, oh, and said, I'm bringing my brother. He's a very anointed a man of God, uh, this and that. Now the expectations of this man of God in South You're Africa. Big. Mm. He saw this man is big, gigantic, they came to receive me at the airport. Oh my God. I could see a disappointment on their face. In their talking, they told me they are going to give me the main service because it's always jam-packed, it's always mighty. And uh, Oh my God. I saw disappointment. I think when he went back home, he was like, God, you have given me up. What are my members going to say? Mm. This guy looks like David. He's so skinny, and I was very skinny. I am skinny right now, but I was too skinny. Mm. In the morning, Sunday comes to preach. He told me, ah, you know, man of God, I ah, you know the program has changed a little bit. You know, we are going to give you 15 minutes and greet the church. I was so disappointed. Because I had all these words I had written to preach the gospel. You know, the Spirit of the Lord told me, Isaac, relax. Mm. I have been with you and I will always back you, you up. Yes. I came to church. The church, I saw the entire church was totally disappointed because they expected a man with a belly. That's why one of these days I'm eating so much <laughs> and I'm putting on weight like never before because I've realized people want, want people who appear like good, you know. The big, Lord told me when I stood on the pulpit, the Lord told me do not try to appear is any man preach in 15 minutes and leave? I came as I, I greeted the church. I'm Pastor Isaac. I come from Uganda. This and this. Let, let, can we open a scripture, Pastor? In only five minutes. That's what I asked the pastor. And he told me, Yes, I remember the script the scripture. It was Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1. Everything has its time. Time to die, time to be born. And now the prophetic came on me. I prophesied starting on the pastor. I told them this church is under debt. And tomorrow you are given time. If you don't pay, you vacate. The man of God was like, yes, man of God. Yes, man of God. We are trying to co collect money, but we do tomorrow we have to make it. We already have an eviction notice. 
I said, I cancel the eviction notice now. You know what the pastor told me? Can you go on? Can you go on? I started prophesying into the lives of people from 15 minutes to one, to one hour and 40 minutes. I came out of South Africa with, I have preached a lot at some countries, like 20. But South Africa gave me money I've never held in life. In one service, I had, and I will not say that money, it was much. I'll tell you it was much. Yes. Because they love prophecies. That even till now, I, I'm still, I still eat their tithe. People call me from South Africa, man of God, I have my tithe. You prophesied last time. Let me tell you somebody who is going to help you don't look as if they can help you in life we need three kinds of people and I wind up with that we need divine connectors they may not have what we want but they know where, where what we have is Yes. we have bearers somebody who is going to bear your burden and walk with you in life you need that kind of a person and above all we need men who have influence I do not I have what you need I can give you what you need. But again, if you're going to get anything from any man, pose yourself as somebody receivable. How? Add value on yourself. Mm. Men, do not go for a woman who is high class and you are a low class. Mm. They are going to belittle you. Mm. They are going to trash you. Mm. Man of God, I've never been in all this life. Sigani wangako. You know why? I will look at a woman... And I know that he likes this kind of person and I will become the person he wants. Until to date, I dropped that mentality and appear as, a, as I am. But you're not going to go for Museveni's daughter. Add value on yourself. One, go for school. Go back to school. Two, find a job. No woman wants an idle man. He's not going to come and help you with your idleness. Am I, am I speaking to somebody? Mm. Before God gave a woman, a man, anything, he gave them what to do. He gave them, uh, he gave them land to till. Do not bring a woman when you're still idle. I don't mean job. You may not have a job, but you have a destiny and you're building your own uh, destiny. Do you understand? Mm. I don't mean that. I mean somebody with a future. Build yourself read, go to school, add value on yourself. If you're going to be a better preacher, add value on yourself, read, be knowledgeable. Because the world does not need an, an ignorant person. I wound up with this. Love every man unconditionally. They may not be lovable, but try as much as possible to love. There are two secrets of loving somebody. One, pray for them you will never hate what you pray for. Two, close your ears. Because every time you hear that somebody say this, you're going to hate them. And this is a technique I've developed. I don't want to hear what somebody said. In fact, if you call my number and you, and you tell me what somebody said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. Because one secret of loving this person, let me not hear what they say, because they will always say something negative. So I will not hear what somebody said. I will, because... I want to love them. I still want to see them as the image of God. Because it's not them. Nobody's fighting you, but the spirit in them mm. is the one fighting you. I rest my case. Amen. Pastor Charles, I want to close with this. Uh, someone asked a question here. He said, you are very right. Where did the question go? That's why many, many have relaxed. Pastor, Pastor, I wonder why people are not involved. Uh, he said, Pastor, uh, let's go back to church. Why is there no love in God's body? Pastors, pastors' wives, and digger worshippers hate one another. Why? Yeah, As you close, I think I think for me it's it's, it's, it's a very uh, disturbing thing in church, in the body of Christ, and the enemy has used it so much to, to divide us. And uh, because the devil knows we cannot operate when we have one when we have division, which is. Uh, the division of vision. If the vision is divided already, we cannot operate. Operation is in unity. So we have a, 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 a unity of mind, a unity of focus, unity of goal. When we are united, we do a lot together. So what the enemy does is to bring in bickling. In James chapter 4, 
I think verse 1, uh, uh, the Bible says, and he wrote to them and, and he said to them that, um, why do I hear quarrels among us to you, strive and fights within you? Why are all these things existing within you? And then, and then, and then Paul is, is saying that those things are existing in the body of Christ. Don't you know that we are of one Christ, one baptism, one spirit? Um, when you read in First Corinthians, I think chapter 12, Paul begins to talk about one body. I think from about verse 12 that we are one body and so the body operates together what many believers have failed to understand is that we cannot be the same but we can work together we don't have to agree to work together we can disagree and still work together um, for example my, this finger of mine wears my ring but, but if the finger begins to complain right now and, and say uh, I, I will not wear that ring because I can't see it. The eyes enjoy the privilege of seeing the ring, but the eye will never see what the, what the, what the finger has not, has not worn. The, the hands will not be complaining to the shoes, I mean to the feet. It is you that wears, that wears shoes, so it's up to you. At the end of the day, all these body parts of mine work together. We have been having COVID-19. The feet can be there saying, uh uh, it is you, fingers that bring sickness. So, me, I'm safe. But the moment I get the coronavirus, the feet and the, everybody's going to be sick. So, that's, that's what happens is that we are living in a body of Christ, which people, are, first of all, are very competitive with, with, with one another. We forgot the real purpose why God called us. Uh, somebody is in a choir, he's fighting, somebody else is doing worship, somebody else is in an ushering team, somebody else is in, I mean, you hear so much word on, words within the ministry and then you begin to wonder what's going on. Pastors' wives fighting, uh, pastors' wives and pastors fighting, pastors and it is all kind of commotious and, you know, but I think for me when we totally understand that we are all gifted differently, yes. we are all enabled by God in different ways. Oh, yes. I need you and you need me for us to function. Yeah. You know, we are part of one body. You know, so what God is saying to us is that, listen to me, um, the, the head, you know, may have all these things, but the head cannot walk. Much as the head is the one that gives instruction, the feet must be able to obey. Yes, the feet is, 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 is what is going to walk. Yes, you know, my hands tie my shoes, but it's my feet that wears the shoes. So the hands can say, no, today I'm not, I'm not going to help you. I don't wear you find a way of, of, of fitting yourself. But my hands must be able to coordinate themselves and, and help the feet. Because once a pain comes to my feet and I'm sick, even the hands will not be able to touch whatever they want to touch. So I think people must understand that the ministry is grown up by different giftings of God within us. And people don't have to be perfect to work with you because you're neither perfect so take on people the way they are understand people you know loving people does, does not mean i want to say this again doesn't mean they must be your friends friendship is by choice i choose who's my friend yes. but loving people is a command of god it is my responsibility to, to love people friendship and how far i bring you into, into my world what you must know or what you must not know about me is my choice exactly. I can limit what I can tell you and what I, and what I won't tell you. Yes, but I have to love you the way you are. Yes, and so many believers walk in it. No wonder some people can never be anointed. They can be gifted, but they can never attract the anointing because they don't walk in love. The anointing of the Holy Spirit falls upon hearts. Yes, if God is going to anoint a man, he doesn't anoint the head. He does not anoint uh, the feet. He anoints the heart. Yes, the Bible says it is out of their heart that flows the issues of life. Yes, so we have got people who don't have purity of the heart. They say something else, they mean something else. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the problem. So, so be, when you begin to minister, even the flow of your oil is contaminated. Because the heart is corrupted. The heart is sick. You have a grudge on somebody, you have a grudge on somebody, you have an issue with somebody else, you have an issue with somebody else. You cannot fully function. Many people think that people hate them, but in most cases, you attract what you are or what you give. That's a bit deep for 
a few for late hours when we are about to close. You attract exactly what you are or what you give. When you love people, constant love people and honor people, people will love you back. We have a lot of ministers who are too high. They are too anointed even more than the Holy Spirit himself. Like they, 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 they cannot come down to the place where they're able to love people. Jesus ate with everybody. Until the Pharisees said, but which kind of man is this? It's with sinners. The Lord said, John the Baptist came. He was in the wilderness. You judged him. I came, I ate with sinners, you're judging me. The thing is, you can never know what, what people think about you and you can never choose what they say about you. People will say whatever they want to say. But you as a minister, learn to love people. I have seen the greatest joy of loving people from my own experience. And you know one of those reasons why I love people? One, one time I was sharing with a very close friend of mine and, and, and I told them, when God permits somebody to cut my path, to come into my life. I know they are God sent. There are two kinds of people that walk into my life every day. One person is the one I'm going to help and the other person is the one who's going to help me. Yeah. Now, the one you help today can help you tomorrow. I've learned to invest in people without expectation. Yeah. I, 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 have, I have kids that pay for school fees at, at our church. We don't have all that money. But I'm, I'm paying, and many people I, I not do it here. I get for my little you know, bills and, and pay. But the reason why I do that is not because I expect of them that one day they're going to turn around and, and be a blessing to me. I've sown my seed because even me, I was helped. If that, there's a white man who paid my school fees. If that man never came into my life and paid my school fees, perhaps right now I would, I would not be sitting on this panel. So when I get people that come into my, cross my path, my first instinct is to help. I've seen on social media, they do this, these social experiments. I'm telling you something, people are very, very weird. They did a, a social experiment and it, it amazed me. A, a, a guy, a, the same guy, stood outside the mall and he dressed roughly and, and, and held a baby with a bottle of milk and, and, and he said please give me some money some change for milk nobody gave him he went back and changed his clothes put on a suit and packed a lamborghini outside and then hold, held a baby and walked onto the mall and he said would you please help me with, with some change everybody gave him money which shows you that the hearts of men want to give to you when they like you you must appear to them likable yeah. but the guy who really had the need was not given the need I don't know how that operates. But even in church, if somebody walks in here, like in Uganda, let's talk about Uganda, they look in the parking and they've seen the guys parked a hammer. All, all of a sudden, all the ushers are interested to go and just welcome the man of God. Or give whoever. Him a special seat. Yeah, whoever it is. Somebody else walks in, they're dressed roughly. The usher doesn't even look at their face, points. These are the ones who dress so well. They're going to carry their Bibles. That's why, for me, I told people at our church that we, we, we're going to treat people the same. We're going to love people because when, when somebody comes into your environment, even though they're dressed badly, after a while, what you're preaching will change them. In fact, the impact of your ministry is not felt by the people that come in when they're rich. It is felt by the people that come to you broke and become rich. Then I can know I'm doing something. My gospel is changing people. Come on. I like the rich ones to come so that they can help me here and there. But my ministry, and it, listen, listen to me, Pastor Isaac. Do you know if there's somebody who comes to your church under your teaching and you're not adding any value to them, they're going to become toxic to you. As a preacher, as a pastor, if somebody sits under you and you don't add value to them, they listen to you as if they even judge you. I think, I think you would have done the scripture this way. Then you know that you, you never help them. So that's why for me, I, I don't pray for you know, people to come, rich people to come. No, no. I told God, bring me the people that my ministry will impact. Whether they are wealthy or broke, whatever it is, 
if as long as what is in me can, can change their life. Those are the people that I want. I want somebody in my church, whether he's an MP or member of parliament or, or he's an owner of, of the biggest you know, parastetro in Uganda. I want them to sit down on the front row of my ministry with a notebook and a pen, knowing that what my man of God is saying to me is life. Because you can still find another broke guy. He's broke. He comes in broke, but doesn't he also, also, also get from your ministry. They're not blessed by you. They are there manipulative. There are people who are stuck in a mindset. In Uganda, they go to, to every church with the same testimony of sorrow, of pity. My wife left me. She left me seven years ago with seven kids. So I, then, then you give them. <laughs> then they go to another church. They cry the same story. Then, then you give them. I, I want someone to walk in, into the ministry and when God touches you by his word, he must change who you are. In fact, my prayer is that God will bring to fireplace people that are going to consume what is in this place. People that come in thirsty, pastor. There's nothing as good as preaching to a thirsty church. To, if you have a leader, if you have a leader, pastor, on your panel, on your leadership team, who does not take your notes, you preach and they look at you as if you are, you are local Z, fire them. <laughs> take away the, the, your responsibility. Secondly, you have a leader when you, if you crack a joke, they, they don't laugh. If you say something for crying, they don't cry. Leave them alone. <laughs> don't, I'm telling you, don't assign them. People that must be close to you must be the first consumers of your message. Yes. Yes, sir. They must believe in you. Yes, sir. 100%. Yes. That's why the challenge, I close with this one, I, I, I promise you. The challenge is not with the people that are far from us. We can look good to anyone who is in a distance. Right now, people who are watching me on social media who don't even know me, they're seeing a guy with a suit, uh, you know, with a tie and speaking well. But somebody else who's close to me may have a different picture. Because the gospel is not only preached, but the gospel is lived. You are the greatest sermon any man can ever hear. We only have one change that, that everyone who came to the building did not, you know, they're not here. Yeah. But, but, but this being our last service in the building, we should have done better. Let me say it again. Maybe they, they'll be alive. You are the greatest someone that any man has ever read. Yes, you can preach to me all Abraham. You can tell me about Moses and Jeremiah, what they did, what, how they did, how Esther was kind. But if you're unkind to me, all your someone is not of any use. So you, we, we must live the gospel. We must live the gospel. By the loving people is the easiest thing to do. It's very easy. It's easy. Simply ask God to give you the love in, in your heart and you enter every situation. Not, it doesn't mean that you have to be attached to the people. Here in America, the Americans have got a character. They don't have to love you to smile. Have you, have you ever realized that? Yeah, they, they smile. How are you doing? How are you doing? Which is not the same in Europe. In England, people are tough. Everyone is mean. Everyone is, is angry about I think it's the weather. But here, people laugh. You know, there's a smile on the face of people in the US. It may not be genuine, but at least they show a smile. Yeah, they lie to you. But at least, but at least there's a smile. So in church, Pastor, as we close out, Jesus said, John 13, by this they shall know you my disciples when you love one another let's let's figure out ways of of reconciling in the choir how can i sing with you on the same line i even heard of stories somebody is singing and the other one says uh -uh, i'm not backing that one jehovah you are the most high Nagamba, Nagamba, you are Namadi Zanjan, Jacoba Kinga. You know? Yes, so you come to the place whereby somebody is ushering people on the door. When he sees somebody showing up, he gets busy, he gets busy on, on the phone. Praise the Lord. How are you going to be blessed in a service with that heart? It's heavy, you're full of bitterness. So, uh, my prayer tonight is that 
God will be able to release your spirit. The Bible says that, that how good it is for brethren to come together in unity. It is like the precious oil that flew on mountain uh, 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 Hermon, Hermon, that flew down the beard of Heron, mm. down to his down to his beard, head of Heron, down unto his beard. There is no anointing that will flow in the body of Christ without love. It doesn't begin with the pastors that we're talking about who are divided. It begins by you, the choir member, by you, the usher, by you, the member of the church, loving somebody else. And when we are able to love each other, pastor, you can be shocked what kind of grace can be released. People are watching us. People are looking at us. People are seeing us. But when you hear the words between believers, some believers, their relationships between them are even worse than those of non-believers. People killing each other. Someone is not happy about this one becoming this. Someone becoming the other. You know, most times, do you, you know that the conversations that we have while we are going back home are not even about the someone. The conversation is about what hair piece she had. Did you see the? Did you see how she behaved? Did you even see that? You know, and the whole time that's what you, and then you even forget the word of the week that the pastor spoke about. Where is the love? I'm not saying that me who's preaching to you, I'm perfect about it. I've had to learn through it because people are going to test you. People will test you. I'm telling you, humans will talk about you until you're tested to the core. But I've grown up to the level of not talking quickly because I own what I've not said. So I go home, I breathe in, I think right, and then I face the person. If I have to talk about it, I talk about it. If I don't have to talk about it, we leave it. If I need to talk about it, I talk about it. And sometimes some people are just negative energy. For me, I turn it around for my positivity. In fact, some of my best sermons I preached in life where when my, my worst enemies were sitting on the front row. Wow. But, <laughs> yes, but, but by the grace of God, um, we want to pray for you. I know Pastor Godfrey is going to close out. But we want to pray for you. First of all, we are excited with, the, with God for being able to be with you. It's been a time for, um, you know, rethinking during the lockdown, reconsidering. And we thank God. God has put us down here to share some things. These are very key things. What we share tonight is very, very important. You need to understand, child of God, that when God blesses you, when God opens windows of heaven, he's not going, literally going to open them in heaven. What he has said to you is going to bring people in your life. Now, you, you cannot be nasty to everybody. You cannot hate everybody. You cannot think that for you, you don't need them. You even use that word, I don't need anybody. No, you're going to need those people, I'm telling you. One way or the other, yeah. somebody is behind the door you want to enter. Yeah. Somebody knows somebody that you don't know, that knows somebody that knows somebody about somebody. Yes. Sometimes the one who's going to help you doesn't even have to open the door. All they have to do is to recommend you. Can you imagine that the woman that you're dissing right now may be the same person that they're going to ask if you're marriageable, if your marriage material, what are they going to say about you yes. question is who will even miss you when you're gone so it is important for you to understand loving people is key because when you love God you cannot hate people when you love God you have to love people so I'm praying for you it's not easy it's, some of you are struggling right now with unforgiveness you are, you, you, you are watching somebody hurt you and we, we cannot change that but forgiveness is not for them it's for you Release them. Send them uh, 50 bucks today. And tell them, I, I, I don't know how, you, how you're doing, but I love you. In fact, man of God, I feel an instruction right now. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you short. Would you let me? Uh, yes, sir. I hear the voice of the Lord telling us to do something. Find somebody you, you don't like. F yes. No, don't worry. They are going to know. And you will explain yourself what you don't like, what they did. Find somebody who has wronged you. Bless them today and release them. It's a tough instruction like Elisha gave to Haman to go deep in, uh, in, in muddy waters. Find somebody who has wronged you. Bless them today financially and say, you know Isaac, you did this. It did not appease. This is a divine instruction and it's going to open up your doors. It's... I, know, I don't normally tell, say these things. 
with finances i'm shy about them but i'll tell you this find that person today and make it right with them because god wants to make it right with you in fact it has it has been I'm speaking to somebody and God has been telling you this. Your you, 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 you grudge with some, this person is the root cause for your, 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 your closed heaven. Your heavens are closed because of the person you don't like. Bless them this afternoon and say, you know what? Isaac, I bless you and release you. And after you do that instruction, it seems like it's impossible. But obedience is better than sacrifice. You will be able to rebuke disobedience when your obedience is full. And I pray today that the Lord will give you thirsty for love and to love his people. Hunger. May you ask for that hunger today. Follow that instruction and see how this week is going to open up for you. In the name of the Lord God. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. We, we just thank God for this great opportunity that uh, God has unleashed his grace and favor and new kind of teachings in our life. Now, uh, this great man of God, I have said, loving is something that is simple and easy. Love, church folks, God is way. That doesn't mean that you have to approve everything that they do. That doesn't mean that uh, you have to go out with everyone. But love them unconditionally without expectation if you don't have no expectation as you love somebody you'll never be disappointed i want to tell you this our time in this world is limited and you cannot live your life fighting everybody just do your best that you live your legacy in the life of somebody else do good to everyone no matter how bad they hurt you keep on doing good Someday your sons and your daughters shall reap the harvest that you did not, uh, what, that you wasn't able to reap, but you was able to plant a seed in someone else's life. I know God is going to bless someone with this message. Keep on sharing. Uh, there's a, a, someone in Uganda, Ambrose, you said you need a prayer that God may bless the works of your hands and you, that you may prosper. Now, I would, I would have, uh, uh, I would have uh, gotten to read all the comments uh, from uh, everybody else, but we have a, a whole lot of pages uh, that is live. Uh, my page, uh, Frey Iwari, uh, the Fireplace Church page is live, Campfire TV is live, and, uh, and uh, Destiny Matters is live. Now, uh, but uh, I would have read all everybody that is watching on dif different other channels. But, you know, I can't go through all this because of time. But there are two people that I can't go without missing. Uh, Apostle Makaya uh, from South Africa, Peter Makaya. Uh, it's a blessing that you're connected with the Fireplace Church and Pastor uh, Princess Comba. With, what a blessing. Pastor Priska, thank you for watching. And everybody from all walks of life. Thank you for sharing the page, uh, especially uh, lovely Enora. You've been sharing this page from the start. May God richly bless you. And every Fireplace Church member and those who have been watching from Destiny Matters, may God richly bless you. But let me pray for, uh, for uh, Ambrose. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I release a supernatural power. For the Bible says, it's you that gives wisdom and power to make wealth. Would you stretch out your mighty hand over Ambrose in the country of Uganda in the name of Jesus. He has put on data to watch this broadcast. Let your grace and your favor sit on them in the name of Jesus. Lord, beside Ambrose, there are some other folks who are watching from all over the world who need the same kind of blessing. Would you just spread it all over in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for someone who want to take Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And these are just simple prayers that can make you cross over. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Would you forgive all my sins? Wash me with your blood. I'm crossing over from darkness to light. I denounce every plan of the enemy. I denounce you, devil, right now in Jesus' name. I'm crossing from darkness to light. Lord, erase my name from the book of death and rewrite it in the book of life. From today onwards, I'm born again. 
Now, if you pray that prayer, you just got yourself saved. Reach us at the Fireplace Church page and we will help you grow spiritually. Now, the sun big is coming in Boston. There is Destiny Matters Mega Fest that is coming. Uh, we'll have uh, Pastor Charles Casibante, and it will be right at the Fireplace Church Promises, our new building that we are moving over uh, next week. The address is 145 uh, Newton Street, right here in Waltham. It's just a quarter miles from here, so we won't take much. But it's a mega blessing to see this coming to Boston. Uh, Destiny Matters Mega Face coming to Boston. I want to uh, let everybody know when it's a season, master the season and capture the moment so that your season does not pass you by. And then we're going to have minister's class at, at teachings that's going to help uh, the servants and the preachers and uh, ministers. If you, are, you have a calling in any department, this will be your time at the same place at the fireplace church will give you all the days together so that you run with the vision may god richly bless you join us again at the same place here at the fireplace church here the place where god meets men face to face i know we don't dream but when we do we dream big we are destiny helpers general builders may god richly bless you in jesus name the son of the living god amen amen